oftentimes one of the most difficult sections of an integral calculus class is well trigonometric substitution so in other words evaluating integrals via substituting trig functions for the variable and then exploiting the trigonometric identities to aid in simplification well recently i saw this nice technique that i found in the college math journal to get away with solving or evaluating, I should say, most of these integrals without trigonometric substitution. And I thought I'd make a video about a couple of examples that illustrate this technique. So let's just jump right into the first example. Say we wanna evaluate the integral of x cubed over the square root of one plus x squared. Now, the standard technique here would be to set x equal to tangent theta. That makes dx equal to secant squared d theta. But then 1 plus x squared will be 1 plus tangent squared. And then you can use a tangent secant identity to help simplification. But what we'll do here is something, well, a little bit different. Because like I said, uh, to start this, we want to do away with trig substitution. So what we'll do is a so-called u squared substitution. And here we're gonna set u squared equal to one plus x squared. I guess that's equivalent to setting u equal to the square root of one plus x squared. And I should say that in this case over here, the jump towards evaluating this integral without trig substitution is pretty straightforward and something that could easily be, you know, guessed if you're good at substitutions. What we'll see over here is a little bit trickier. Okay, so anyway, we've got u squared is one plus x squared. Observe that differentiating, we get two u du is the same thing as two x dx, meaning that u du will be the same thing as x dx. Okay, but then what are we gonna do with that? Well, let's see if we can partition our integrand into parts that can be you know, easily substituted for. So here's what I'll do. Let's take this and write it as x squared over the square root of one plus x squared, and then we'll have x dx. So I partitioned it like that because observe that this x dx will be u du upon our substitution. Then this denominator is really taken care of. Observe by taking the square root, that'll simply be u, really the absolute value of u, but let's not get caught up in that. That you could worry about if there are bounds of integration. So we'll just say that it's u. And then, well, this x squared can be solved for by using our original substituting equation. So let's see, that's gonna eventually give us something like this. We'll have u squared minus one over u times u du. Like I said, after our substitution. But now that's gonna give us the antiderivative of u squared minus one du. Observe that those two u's cancel this one right here in the denominator and this one right here in the numerator. But now we're left with something really straightforward. This is gonna be one third u cubed minus u plus a constant. Substituting back in, what will we have? Well, we're gonna have one third and then one plus x squared to the three halves. That's our u cubed term and then minus one plus x squared to the one half and then plus a constant. So like I said, there's no trig substitution here, but this substitution you could maybe poke around with and um, come up with that without too much difficulty because like I said before, observe that it's essentially the same thing as setting u equal to the square root of one plus x squared. That being said, we're really helped out with the fact that we have x to an odd power up here. Observe that if we had x to an even power and tried to do this, you would be in this endless loop of creating more and more integrals involving these radicals of one plus or minus a variable squared or that variable squared uh, plus or minus one. So 
That being said, if we've got an even exponent here, we need a new trick. And that's we'll, what we'll look at with this second integral, which is the integral of the square root of one minus x squared over x to the fourth. And well, usually in this case, we would set x equal to sine theta, and that makes dx cosine theta d theta, and then you get some nice simplification from there. But here we're gonna make another u squared substitution. And in this case, the u squared substitution will be one minus x squared over x squared. So it's really like this one minus x squared, this thing inside of the radical, but we bring another copy of x squared into the denominator. So now where could we go from here? Well, perhaps we would want to write this as x to the minus two minus one to aid ourselves when we take the derivative of both sides to find out the du component like we did over here. Okay, so differentiating, we'll have two u du is minus two um, over x cubed, keeping in mind that what we're really getting there is minus two times x to the minus three, but I'll just bring that down, and then dx. But then here we can get u du is equal to maybe minus dx over x cubed. So something like that. Now let's take our original function inside of the integral and see if we can partition it into pieces that work with this substitution. So I'm gonna start by putting a minus sign out front because we're gonna put a minus sign inside as well for our substitution. And then we'll write this as the square root of one minus x squared over x times minus dx over x cubed. So that minus dx over x cubed will eventually become u du I put a minus sign out there, again, to counteract that. But bringing that x cubed inside gave us just an x left over in the denominator, given that we started with an x to the fourth. But now we can bring this x in the denominator into the radical. That'll give us the square root of one minus x squared over x squared. And then you see our substituting variable here. And then again, we've got minus dx over x cubed. But now we can finish our substitution. We'll have minus, this will be u times, well, minus dx over x cubed is simply another copy of u. So it's gonna be u du. In other words, we have minus the antiderivative of u squared du. But that's a pretty straightforward antiderivative. That's gonna give us minus one third u cubed plus a constant. And then of course we can substitute back in for our original variable and we'll have minus one third, one minus x squared to the three halves plus a constant. And there you have it. We've solved or evaluated this integral without doing any sort of trig substitution. And the fact is, is this kind of thing works anytime you have a setup that you would usually do trig substitution where the kind of free x is x to an even power. Whereas our original type of substitution works anytime you would originally do a trig substitution, but now you have x to an odd power. Of course, you're gonna need to tweak something here and there depending on if you've got a number that's not equal to one right here inside of the radical. And that's a good place to stop.